In this hands-on exercise, we will explore how to read files stored in Parquet format in your stage location and create table using Snowpark DataFrame API. As we have learned that Snowpark can read data from stage location and cannot read from your local environment. So we will cover reading single Parquet file using Snowpark read API, schema definitions for Parquet files, read multiple Parquet files, Parquet file with header and without header. Write Parquet file into a Snowflake table. Will it be a standard or a transient? Review data type and data length followed by query history and its performance. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this Snowpark hands-on playlist. Let's jump into our VS code where I'm using Python 3.8.16 and Snowpark version 1.3.0. Throughout this demo, I am going to use a customer data and let's see how the customer data looks like. So this is how my customer data looks like. It has a salutation, first name, last name, birth date, birth country and email address. And let's try to understand what happens when we describe the table. So my salutation is a four character varchar followed by first name, last name is 20 and 30 respectively. Birth date is a date type and birth country is 20 character and email address is a 50 character. So this is my parquet.py. I am importing the standard Snowpark library, creating a session, checking if session is established or not. If anything goes wrong, it will throw an error. Now, so I already have a file in my stage location. Let's see how does it look like. So this is my stage file of 294.176 size. So when I'm going to read a file from my stage location, which is of file type parquet, I have to use parquet function from my read API. And this parquet function expect a string as a location of your stage path and it returns a data frame. Once you get a data frame, you can fetch the schema attribute. Schema is not a function, it is an attribute. And from schema, I'm trying to print so we can understand what is object type and then print the length of the schema. I'm iterating through schema element and printing the column name followed by the column type and finally printing total record count, which has been read as a part of this data frame and printing the first 10 record. Once it is printed, I am using a write function on the top of my data frame and saving the data as a table. And the name is given is a cust underscore zero one. So let's run this program and see the result. So let's analyze this output. So line number 29 printed the data type is snowflake.snowpark.types.struct type very similar to the PySpark or a Spark framework. It has total six column. Since this Parquet file does not have a header, it has automatically followed Apache Spark style of giving the column name like underscore column zero, column one, column two, column five. So it has total six column and index start with zero. The total row count is seven, four, seven, five. And this is how my first 10 record looks like. And finally, it has saved the data in a table called cust underscore case 01. Let's go to our web UI and check how does it look like. So let's check the record count first. So I have 7475. So the data has been written into the table appropriately. Let's check the first 10 records. And this is matching with this first 10 record. Now let's describe the table. So if you look to this table, it has varchar 16 MB, only the column underscore three got the date data type. The rest of them has got the varchar. However, the length has not been defined here. If I, I go back to the original table where I have taken the data from, it is having appropriate data type. When you are creating a table using a parquet data file, probably this would be one of the challenge you will face it. Now, if I try to run select get DDL statement for this table, let's see what result does it bring. So if you look into this create and replace statement, it is a standard table. It has not created a transient table or a temp table. It has now let's talk about a case two when my parquet file is having a header. Let's see how does it behave. So this is my case two stage location where I have a parquet file 
and it is following exactly the same coding the name of the table is changed to cust underscore k0 there is no changes other than that now let's run this program now my program has created the table successfully and this time all the columns are having a meaningful name the reason for that my parquet file is having an appropriate header so if your parquet file is having a header your schema will automatically get the header when you create a table the table will also have appropriate header as per your parquet file it has populated 7450 records let's go back to our snow site and check how does it look like so this is my cust k02 i have total 7450 records good so these are my first data set they start with lewis and end with kenneth so here is start with lewis end with kenneth this is also good and if i describe the table even though the column names are defined in the parquet file it looks like the parquet file does not have the data data length and that's why all the string or a text data type got full length now if i define get dtl let's see what does it bring again this is a standard table and if i compare my expectation to have exact length for my data type which is still missing now let's talk about a third case where i have a multiple parquet file so when you have a multiple parquet file you don't have to specify the exact parquet file name you can just keep the folder name and this parquet function will automatically consider all the files before i run this python file let's go and check how many parquet files we have in our k03 location so i have total eight different parquet file starting with 000 until 070 and all of them are having snappy compression and it is under case 03 there is no change in the program other than having this parquet file name now let's run this program now i can see 100k records got populated and this is how my first 10 record looks like let's go back to snow site and check it so let's do the record count so it has total 100k record looks good let's see the first 10 record looks good and let's describe the case 03 table so data types are matching however length is not matching now let's talk about our fourth case where i have to specifically create a transient table rather than creating a permanent table because permanent or a standard table is more expensive because of the fail safe feature so i am again reading my k03 files from my stage location and only thing which i have to change it when i am saving the data inside a table i can pass a parameter called table type and then i can say transient okay and let's see if i run this what happens i will give the table name as a 4 So the program ended successfully let's go and check so since it is a partition file let's see how many record does it have it should have 100k records so i got 100k record let's check first 10 records so this is my 10 record uh, let's describe the table so again my data type is all good but data length is mismatching and when i run my get ddl statement here i managed to create a transient table okay so this is how you can read a parquet file whether it is a single parquet file or a multiple parquet file and if your parquet file is having a header then the header will appear if it doesn't have a header then it will follow the spark style of c1 c2 c3 c4 for your column names let's go and quickly review the query activities so the last few queries we fired from our snow site web ui and prior to that we have this create temporary file format then create transient table and followed by drop the file format and then canceling all queries before we close the snowpark session and when you click on this to see how the query profile looks like so it has followed two step the step one says create table which is nothing but a metadata operation and then step two is actually populating result using create table as a select it has written 3.63 mb which is a compressed data it took four 39 milliseconds to write 100k records which is pretty good
So I hope you have enjoyed this quick code walkthrough. You can download the sample code as well as Snowpark cheat sheet. Refer the description link for the instruction. For any additional queries or specific question, feel free to drop a note in the comment section or drop a note in my Instagram account. Thank you for watching. Happy learning and keep growing.